Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today's episode is dedicated to an advanced form of quantum jumping water. So far in the podcast, we've discussed several ways to quantum jump. Quantum jump meaning to move into a parallel or alternate reality. We've explored a variety of different ways to do it. There are a number of amazing techniques. And the more that we experiment, the more we discover new and interesting ways to do it. We've practiced breathing techniques, using the plat, visualization techniques, merging with a quantum twin. And I've had people report back amazing success stories on many of these different techniques, but there's one that I find to be very powerful. When I return to it, I find it to be one of the most powerful techniques, and that is water. When you hear the words quantum jumping, I would love to know what exactly comes to your mind. Put it in the comments. Oftentimes when I'm teaching and sharing different ideas like this, I'm coming from a shared understanding utilizing my explanations from past episodes, but I do believe oftentimes there is some meaning lost when I talk about these things. What exactly comes to mind for you? Do you think the word quantum immediately makes this a science fiction idea? Quantum jumping is indeed based on the concept of quantum physics, but it is not solely based on the studies of scientists in the quantum physics field. If you're interested in quantum jumping, then you may need a better understanding of what it entails and how to perform the quantum jump. First of all, let's back up a little bit. You need to be introduced to the theory of the existence of multiverses. You haven't been already. This is the idea that we exist at the same time in multiple dimensions and universes but are leading either the same, worse, or better lives than our current state or universe. Quantum jumping is a technique that is used by many people around the world to visit their many different versions across all dimensions of the multiverse. It may sound like science fiction, but there have been so many people who swear that they have met multiple versions of themselves as they perform quantum jumps to other universes in the multiverse. I am one of those people. I try to document my own experiences in my book, The Reality Revolution, and I've also discussed it on several episodes. You can check out the Quantum Jumping playlist where I've discussed different techniques. I provided different meditations for you to experiment with this. People with completely different backgrounds, cultures, ages, and walks of life believe in the power of quantum jumping. It's not just me. With exciting new discoveries about water and its ability to retain information otherwise known as water memory the use of it to enhance quantum jump experiences is being noticed and we are going to address it on this episode the fact that this technique is so simple and easy to perform is one of the many reasons why so many people are interested in it you will discover that the methods described in this episode are not only easy to perform but can be done by anyone. There are no harmful chemicals or substances needed. Just you, the multiverse, some water, and all the energy that surrounds you. Think of this episode as an easy beginner's guide to connecting to the version of yourself that will help you manifest the reality you have always wanted but never knew how to achieve. I have a meditation on the channel, Charging Water. It's about a 10-minute meditation, and you can use that anytime Much of what I'm teaching is used in that meditation, but I wanted to discuss this further. There are many thought processes when it comes to a viable definition of quantum physics. The Oxford Dictionary describes it as a branch of physics concerned with quantum theory. Quantum physics allows for particles to be in two states at the same time. Stated simply, it's the physics study of how everything works, and it is the best means of describing all the millions of tiny particles that make up matter as well as how they interact with one another. It describes how atomic particles work. 
Everything around us, including ourselves, is made up of these atomic particles, or in simple terms, matter. Quantum physicists explain how biology and chemistry work. Modern physicists, such as Stephen Hawking, believed that multiple universes exist. This is what we will refer to as the multiverse. As I've mentioned, quantum jumping takes qualities from the ideas and theories of quantum physics and incorporates spirituality and the human ability to manifest positive energy. It supports the idea of multiple universes and that there exist different versions of yourself in these alternate realities at the same time that you are existing in your current state. However, these other versions of you could either be at a better or worse stage in their life journey than you. By tapping into their frequency, you can gain important knowledge from the different versions of you. You can then use whatever you have learned and apply it to your current state. Tapping into these various universes in the multiverse provides you with extra energy that is needed for manifestation and also valuable information that can be applied to your current reality. The great thing is that the advice the multiverse version of you offers the current version of you comes from the experience of a trusted source, yourself. Bert Goldman was one of the first teachers of quantum jumping. He taught that we could, in meditation, meet up with our quantum twin from another universe. We could learn from them and come back. There are others, like Vadim Zeeland, that taught a process of sort of surfing through different realities. There are other systems that define quantum jumping as an actual shift in consciousness to the other universe. Everybody has reported different experiences and we are using techniques that can utilize these understandings in all ways. Quantum jumping techniques can be done by anyone that can hold a clear intention of what they want. This episode will introduce you to the basics of jumping with the method of water. When talking about water, there are some questions that you should ask yourself. Do you believe that water has consciousness? Can it shape shift? Can it react to thoughts? Can water remember? If these are true, then water plays a vital role in changing our reality and in quantum jumping. Water is alive. And by alive, I mean it is conscious and it exhibits consciousness by changing shapes, reacting to thoughts, and remembering what it came into contact with. Scientists, chemists, physicists, and other subject matter experts will agree that water possesses various chemical properties. These form polarity with one another. These molecules stick together like good friends at a party. One of their properties includes surface tension, in simplified terms, this means that because these water molecules all stick together, they can resist external forces or pressure. All of these facts have been proven by science through many studies and tests over hundreds of years. What is a much newer theory, however, is that water is actually conscious and has the ability to remember things. There are several properties that water has that are not as clear-cut as each of the above theories. Part of these include water memory. Scientists and physicists are still trying to prove or disprove this theory, and the short answer is that in many instances, they aren't having all that much luck. The reason for that is that the moment water molecules realize they're being observed, they suddenly start behaving completely differently. How then are we supposed to prove scientifically that this is not just a random theory? There's another piece of history here that is interesting, and it throws all of this research out on the heads. That is the fact for years and centuries, farmers and city planners had made use of what was commonly referred to as dowsing rods to find water sources underground. How these dowsing rods would work would be to react to two things, polarity and vibrational energy that the water molecules gave off. Sounds pretty interesting, right? We know that water can shapeshift. All you have to do is pour water from one shaped receptacle to another shaped container and it will immediately take exactly the same form as the container it is poured into. But that's not all. Consider the way that a mountain stream or waterfall flows over boulders, rocks, and pebbles as it follows the natural course on its journey. Water is able to react to thoughts. 
All you need to do is verify and study some of the experiments by Dr. Masaru Emoto. Each one proves that both thought and intention can have an extremely powerful effect on the best quality of water. The water that had been blessed or prayed over provided some of the most exquisite images of change to the molecular structure of water throughout these studies. It all started with an experiment conducted by the renowned Japanese scientist Dr. Masaru Emoto. He began his experiment at a time when he made use of water with the intent to cure people's diseases. The experiment began when Dr. Emoto observed the crystal structure of water to gain physical evidence that would prove water reacted to its surroundings and therefore could be used for more than healing. While conducting his experiment, he came across a book about the crystal structure of a snowflake. That was the beginning of his curiosity and the driving force that led him to uncover the true nature of water that is hidden from the world. It gave him the idea to freeze the water and then use it to view the crystal structure of it under a very powerful microscope. Thus, water crystal technology came into being. In 1990, Dr. Emoto was first introduced to working with water, filling different jars and containers and simply sticking various notes on each one. Some of the notes were positive, stating things like, thank you, I love you, I care about you, and a whole slew of other uplifting thoughts. However, on others, the notes would be negative things, stating, I hate you, you disgust me, I want to kill you. After these bottles of water had been standing a while, he would take a single drop of water from each one, place these on individual slides, and freeze them until they formed crystals. Apart from writing letters or words on pieces of paper, he would also play music to the water. Some of these tunes ranged from Mozart to heavy metal. Once again, the results were almost identical to the experiment above. Not everyone has been a fan of his work and have argued that given the high water composition of the human brain and body, if water is in fact conscious and receptive to energy frequencies, how can these positive or negative messages affect our bodies on a molecular level? What was displayed by each crystal under the microscope could hardly be explained. All the water that had positive intentions directed its way in the form of either calming and peaceful words or music that was refined displayed beautiful asymmetrical crystal formations. Conversely, water droplets that had been frozen from jars containing words that were unkind or had experienced heavy metal music resulted in crystals that were no longer asymmetrical. As a matter of fact, most of these crystals were deformed and distorted. They looked nowhere near as interesting and unique as other crystals. Dr. Masaru Moto collected several water samples from various places and exposed them to different forms of positive and negative energy. These water droplets were then frozen so their crystal structures could be evaluated under a microscope. What's so intriguing about this experiment is that each of the water structures was different. For instance, water collected from a river source that was polluted showed a distorted, asymmetrical, and unappealing structure. On the other hand, water collected from a clean stream and introduced to positive emotions and energy showed up in an almost asymmetrical form as a beautiful composition with a ring in the middle and bright colors. He didn't stop there, however. He then collected two samples from the Fujiwara Dam, one before the Buddhists began to pray and one after. Surprisingly, this sample taken before the prayer showed no clear symmetrical structure, but the sample which was taken after the prayer showed a clean symmetrical structure and beautiful geometries. The source from which the water was obtained remained the same, but the timing when it was extracted from the source was changed. It was incredible that a single hour-long prayer could transform the crystal structure to such an extent. Dr. Emoto then took samples of water that were exposed to different thoughts, once again both positive and negative. The results were unbelievable and showed a similar pattern to that of the Fujiwara Dam experiment. The water samples that were exposed to negative phrases showed as deformed, wholly dissolved, and uneven crystal formations. However, the water samples that were exposed to positive words resulted in the most beautiful crystal structures. This showed Dr. Emoto that positive words produced vibrant, well-defined, symmetrical, and pleasing physical structures, while negative energy or words caused the crystal structures to display asymmetrical structures that were unappealing to the eye. 
Similar results were found when water was exposed to music. Peaceful symphonies of Mozart and other classical music produced hexagonal, symmetrical structures, but heavy metal music resulted in deformed, distorted, and minor crystal formations. It was not just music. The water reacted the same way to images being shown to it. An image of negative words shown to the water led to an unpleasant-looking structure, and a positive, happy image created a beautiful, appealing crystal structure. So the image itself can create a vibration in the water without words or sound. It was clear from this experiment that water could perceive feelings and emotions communicated in any form, whether it was via words, thoughts, pictures, music, vibrations, or even touch. To everyone's surprise, another experiment displayed that water holds memory. When a flower was dropped in a container of water and its samples were frozen, the crystal structures of the water sample replicated the flower. It is an unbelievable and remarkable fact that water has a living consciousness. The ability of water to hold memory is fascinating. In one case, a drop of flower oil was added to the water and the crystal structure displayed the structure of the flower the oil came from. It is quite mind-boggling to even think about, but it shows the extent to which water can perceive and react. This experiment opened new horizons in the field of quantum physics. It led us to really see how perceptive and sensitive matter can be. We cannot be oblivious to the fact that it can detect our intentions. Even the slightest hint, water forms about 60% of our body mass and 71% of the Earth's surface. It would be foolish of us to believe that our intentions, thoughts, words, and actions don't impact our life, health, and well-being through the water. Dr. Emoto begun his water research while studying at the Open International University where he earned a doctorate in alternative medicine in 92. It was there that he was introduced to micro clusters of water. This began his subsequent obsession with the miracles that could be discovered in water. It was also at that time when he invented the water healing practice that is commonly referred to as the Hado today. The very name Hado in Japanese translates to move or wave. Dr. Emoto referred to Hado as the intrinsic vibrational pattern at the atomic level in all matter, the smallest unit of energy. Its basis is the energy of human consciousness. Hado, as described by Dr. Emoto on the official Hado website, explains how everything gives off energy and aura, even thoughts and feelings. These things interact and influence everything else around them. Remember speaking about the universe not being in a vacuum, but rather being filled with matter. Matter is all around us, vibrating at different frequencies. Depending on the level of these vibrations, frequencies can be influenced to change these things. Stimuli could come from anything, including thought, speech, and music. Each of these vibrations could have an effect on the matter, especially water since it holds memory. In the tests that Dr. Emoto conducted with water, he compared human emotions how we would feel with the way that water reacted to the same situation. Consider how you feel when someone is kind to you and they smile. You feel good about yourself, right? Now how do you feel when someone is rude or insults you? You feel the opposite. None of us enjoy being called out or made to feel small or unimportant. His tests included the written word as well, and this is where it becomes fascinating because water can respond to written matter. I know this sounds bizarre and far-fetched. Many of the above experiments involved freezing water with words taped to the container that read things like I love you or thank you or I hate you. As each of these containers froze and were examined under his microscope, he describes the positive words as creating the most beautiful crystal shapes while negative concepts produced structures that looked as though they were totally deformed. Now let's go back to talk about quantum jumping and what we understand about quantum jumping. I know, as usual, there's always gonna be people that just simply do not believe in this concept. But consider the idea that many times, possibly even every time you make a decision or choice, you're actually moving between alternate realities, between parallel worlds. In those alternate realities, there is another possible you who you can connect with so strongly that the conscious awareness and energy that is you literally moves into the other reality. When feeling so strongly connected to another self in a different reality, it is possible to gain direct access to the knowledge available. 
only in that time and space and to experience an entirely different self. What makes quantum jumping possible is that like a quantum particle, every person has the ability to exhibit quantum behavior. While it may seem extremely improbable that you can do the things quantum particles do, such as tunnel through solid barriers or make quantum jumps to other alternate times and places, our current understanding of physics suggests such things are within the realm of possibility and can be expected to occur if you're looking at the science. I'm telling you experientially, it does happen, especially for those who really work on this and have an open mind and understand its process. Experimental observations at the quantum level change our assumptions about reality as we see that. Quantum particles are not always particles and sometimes exist as pure energy. Some kinds of invisible connections exist between entangled quantum particles, so they move together simultaneously with non-local spooky action at a distance. Simply by observing an experiment, we are affecting it. And unlike classical physics, quantum behavior can only ever be predicted by probabilities. In order to explain some of this truly strange quantum behavior, Niels Bohr theorized that quantum particles exist as waves that might be anywhere until the wave function is collapsed. Hugh Everett III theorized that we exist in a multiverse consisting of many worlds of parallel realities. Physicist John Kramer theorizes it is possible for information to be exchanged between past and future through a kind of handshake between two points in space-time. Scientists David Bohm and Carl Prebrum propose that the universe is a giant hologram containing matter and consciousness in a single field. What all this means to someone experiencing a quantum jump is they can enter another parallel reality by relaxing and imagining they are accessing some kind of bridge, window, or doorway to another world with another self who has another set of characteristics, qualities, or skills. With quantum jumping, one makes the leap from simply imagining oneself in an alternate reality to actually being that other self. Cynthia Sue Larson even goes as far to say that the success of most all visualization methods affirmations, faking it till you make it, the placebo effect, and even simply getting out of bed when you don't feel like it can be attributed to quantum jumping. What I found fascinating in the studies of quantum science was that when they looked at a single quantum particle and they observed it when it jumped, it didn't just slide over or move at a certain pace. It disappeared and then reappeared and in the moment before it disappears, there's a burst of energy, which means that there may be a requirement of energy burst or not. That's why I have utilized fire breath and some energetic techniques in order to start the quantum jump. What we're talking about with the quantum jumping with water is a different way of quantum jumping. It's moving into another universe by replacing the quantum selves or sliding or quantum tunneling. So it doesn't necessarily require the energetic exchange. What may be happening, for instance, with the placebo effect, where somebody takes what they think is a drug that will help them with the disease, but it's nothing, is that the mind believes so and they jump into a reality where their body is healed. When I've gone and talked to physicists, what I found in many cases is they don't want to talk about this. There is a significant desire to avoid discussions of spirituality and other sort of weirdness when it comes to quantum physics. But the most common argument is quantum physics is just talking about what's happening in the micro scale. What's happening on the macro scale is not explained by quantum physics. That is simply not true in my own observation. There are many types of behaviors exhibited at the quantum level that we don't expect to see on the macro scale of our daily lives, mostly because we're unaware of being readily able to observe them in our ordinary senses. Our perception of our world in this new quantum age is about to undergo something on par with the Copernican revolution, according to Cynthia Sue Larson in her book, Quantum Jumps. In the Copernican revolution of the 16th century, most people worldwide changed their mental model of our solar system from envisioning the sun and planets revolving around the earth to realizing the earth revolves around the sun. 
once we start to understand what's happening around us, we will start to see examples of quantum superposition of states, quantum coherence, quantum entanglement, quantum tunneling, quantum teleportation on a macro scale. There are objects that we have observed quantum behaviors occurring that are macro sized objects as well. There are some diamonds that have experienced quantum effects that have been noticeable in an experimental setting. So let's just look at what we know. You know, I mentioned John Kramer's transactional interpretation. His interpretation of quantum physics suggests that handshakes take place between quantum particles in different points in time and space. And a particle here now on Earth instantaneously communicates with particles light years away in time and space and possibly in other realities. However, the third many world interpretation posited that possibilities become actualities with each measurement that is made and that every possibility inherent in each wave function is real and that all of them occur at the same time. Therefore, parallel universes coexist side by side undetected by one another. David Bohm's holographic interpretation stated that the universe is like a giant hologram containing both matter and consciousness as a single field. This model suggests that the objective world out there is a vast ocean of waves and frequencies which appear solid to us because our brains convert that enfolded hologram into unfolded physical material. You can sort of pick and choose which of these theories work, but they all can posit the proof of some quantum jumping occurring. I do believe that all the different theories that have been discussed in quantum physics, they can all be working together. The holographic multiverse interpretation, for example, is a combination of holographic interpretation with the many worlds interpretation that provides a more holistic, integrated version of many possible worlds. Within a holographic multiverse, there is an interconnectedness between each part of any given parallel universe and all other possible parallel worlds within that holographic multiverse. When the holographic multiverse interpretation is combined with the transactional interpretation, we gain an extraordinary view of reality that can truly broaden our minds. The transactional interpretation involves absorption and emission of waves with perfect symmetry occurring between emitted and absorbed waves. In essence, what is happening is a synchronized behind the scenes choreography in which one point in space time communicates with another in something akin to a handshake. When you realize that some information is moving forward in time and some backwards through time, there's an equal significance to receiving information as there is to sending it. What I believe is happening when we start to work with quantum particles on the quantum level or think in quantum terms is that a conversation occurs between realities when you undergo these activities or exercises. Those of us who've experienced precognition or premonitions or intuitive hunches or synchronicity or deja vu have received experiential firsthand personal evidence of other possibilities that we can vote on with our emotional reactions. This may be proof that the transactional theory between these two different universes may be true. Just start with the understanding that everything is made up of quantum material at its very core. The idea behind quantum jumps is that it's possible to jump to an alternate reality in much the same way that an electron dematerializes at one orbital level and reappears at another. The fundamental principles behind quantum jumping are based upon the behavior of those very smallest particles known in physics, quantum particles. There is a superposition of states in the time of dematerialization in which a quantum particle is between states and is behaving like pure energy rather than like a particular piece of matter. Just as electrons can make energetic leaps from one energetic level to another, people can quantum jump through alternate realities to experience dramatic shifts in physical reality. Quantum jumps can be envisioned as occurring in a multiverse of many alternate realities. Within each one of these realities exists another possible you that can just as easily be. Anyone who can relax, clear their mind, and envision being different in some way, such as more successful, funny, healthy, wealthy, wise, 
can a quantum jump? To initiate a quantum jump requires keeping an open mind that you can experience another reality. It is important that you're able to sincerely desire and feel a connection with another reality, envisioning some way of making a connection with it through a bridge, a door, a window, or a handshake. Your ability to form a strong intention to concentrate and to get and stay focused while feeling detached from concerns of daily life, relaxed, open-minded, and emotionally energized are essential. Just as when you shift gears on your car, you must first disengage from one gear before re-engaging in a new gear. You m must attain a mindset of a detachment in order to release connections to physical realities you have felt locked into with your thoughts and feelings. Detachment and disengagement gives you a necessary break from identifying as who you thought you are so you can experience the ecstasy of feeling relaxed and energized in a state of pure consciousness for a little while. In such a state of pure consciousness, you can become aware that you are capable of sensing all possible realities and you realize that you can emerge from this meditation or lucid dream into the best possible reality for you. Water becomes a focal point for you to express your intentions into a physical object that has the ability to acquire memory and energy and to transfer that energy in a solid substance that you might find to be more effective than other techniques. I could definitely dedicate a whole episode to talking about the physics behind this and I don't want to get too far off on that path, but it's important that you understand that quantum jumping works, that it can work that it's powerful and that we can use water because it holds memory and on a quantum level when consuming water we can consume what is an alternate universe in the form of a matter that is particularized so a couple things let's talk about water healing with energy we've discussed that water is necessary for any living thing on the planet to survive of course without it the world as we know it would cease to exist Dr. Emoto made the following statement in his New York best-selling book, The Hidden Messages in Water. If we have a clear understanding of water, we will better understand the human body and even unlock the mystery of why we were born. Water surrounds us constantly. It's in the air. We breathe. It falls to the earth in the form of rain and snow. It takes up a majority of the earth in terms of oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams. It can be found in the form of fresh natural springs. Imagine being able to harness the healing energy of all this water daily. You can as long as you set your intention and truly believe. You can charge anything that contains water with vibrational energy from the universe and even the multiverse. You can physically change anything containing water with gratitude, prayers, healing light, energy, or any intention you choose to set. The charging your water meditation that I have on the channel allows you to charge your water with this energy. There's lots of ways you can do it. Long before the groundbreaking discoveries of Dr. Emoto, Amazonian tribes would sing as a way to charge water with energy necessary for healing. Other tribes and nations around the world have been participating in rain dances. Water is also central to many religion and ceremonies and sacred rites such as baptism, cleansings, healing, and even the act of blessing and sanctifying water to make it holy. Oftentimes you go to churches and they have holy water. It's the same idea. According to traditional Reiki healer Corey Chu, there are a number of very basic healing ceremonies that can be done using water. Each of these is easy to do, and you don't need fancy equipment or paraphernalia. Install gratitude into water. You can use water for doing anything from cooking boiling potatoes, steaming vegetables, and making various other culinary dishes. Before beginning any food preparation using water, we should express gratitude. This is done through a prayer over water you will use to cook anything you would eat yourself or over food that you are cooking for others. Your prayer can include a request that it heals the bodies of those that eat anything cooked using the water. Think about the water that you're drinking, especially if you're drinking bottled water. You don't know who was handling the water, the delivery person or the person at the grocery store, and what sort of energies that it's taken on. You might be drinking depression or sadness without even knowing it. 
You can also do therapeutic bathing. A normal bathing experience can be turned into something both therapeutic and healing. Instead of just routinely bathing, fill the bathtub with warm water, adding your choice of oils or flowers or whatever you want to add to it. You can even add music to this. But then I like to use my hands and over the water, I guide it and command the particles in the water to take hold. Dion Fortune has this as an energetic technique that you can use for psychic protection. But in particular, what you do is just ask the particles of water to heal, guide it with the commands of your personality or voice. And you can then take the bath surrounding yourself. In Vadim Zeeland's book, Tufti the Priestess, he recommends accessing what he calls the plat or the energetic braid behind the head while in the bathtub. This is powerful because in that state, it appears the water is more wave-like. If you can place yourself in a wave-like state and then collapse into particle using your intentions, it can be very powerful. You can also use healing showers, using the moving water. And I have found in my own research that moving water seems to be more purified. And so if you can find water at the end of a waterfall or let it run a little bit, it seems to be less impacted by the environment around it. I also recommend using glass instead of plastic. Plastic bottles contain all sorts of chemicals such as bisphenol, more commonly known as BPA, that can contaminate the water. So you can start off just simply by praying over water for healing, for whatever it is. The most effective technique that I have found in terms of quantum jumping is the two glass method. It is imperative that the intention is vivid and defined when you decide to shift from your current reality to the desired reality. The visualization should be as real as possible. Try to imagine yourself in the desired state and living in that moment. Don't think of it as a distant dream. Try to experience it through your consciousness. Doing so will begin the frequency transition and the same will be communicated to the water at a molecular level. I find that you can perform this at any time. Sometimes it's easier to do at the beginning of the day or the end of the day at the same time you meditate. So this technique requires two glasses. The first glass represents the current reality that you are experiencing, while the second glass represents a future state or reality that you would like to experience. These two states are physically connected to the vibrationally charged energy contained in the water. There's a couple of different ways to do this, and what I'm recommending is that you experiment. You can start off by just writing it down on a post-it note or a piece of paper, and you talk about your current reality, what you're experiencing currently in your life. You can even just write current reality if you want to make it simple. Or you can be more detailed and talk about the things in your current reality, in particular that you're wanting to change. What your current bank account is at, for instance. I've done it so that I've written down what my current bank balance is. Or it could be something in particular that's reflective of your current reality. It could be anything from relationship problems to being unhappy in your current state. Maybe you feel that you deserve a raise or a promotion, whatever you may presently be unhappy with in your life or you wish to change. Don't worry about how long the list is. If you use a large sheet of paper, fold it until it is about the same size as a conventional post-it note so it's easy to attach to the glass. Now take a second piece of paper and write down everything that you would like to experience in your reality instead. Make it vivid. Be careful when it comes to the words that you use throughout the process. Remember that our thoughts and words hold intention and whatever you are currently thinking is what will come back to us. If you want that promotion, write it down. If you want to rekindle that relationship, write it down. In the present tense, as if it has already happened. Avoid using any negative words. The universe and multiverse cannot distinguish between good and bad. It will hear and respond to what you're asking for. If you want wealth, ask for it. Health, ask for it. Love, ask for it. If you're presently suffering from an illness or disease, thank God, the divine power, the universe, or whoever you choose to worship for granting you the desire of your heart. 
However, always ensure that the intention is in keeping with the will of the creator of the universe and the multiverse and not according to your own will. Now fold this paper and attach it to the empty glass. Before attaining each piece of paper to each glass, consider the differences between the two lists. Now I have done this two different ways. The first way is that you fill the first glass with water and you focus on that being your current reality. Then you pour the water into the other glass and then change the intentions. And then you drink the glass of the future intentions. Another way to do this is to fill the glasses half full. And what I then do is focus on both, focus on the present reality and focus on the future reality, and then mix them together. This entangles the current reality with the future reality and then drink the whole glass. As we're doing experiments when we quantum jump, you may find success with one method or the other. Some people will shift it over and then drink the glass with the future reality. I have known some people that do not want to have anything to do with the current reality and they don't drink any water with it. What I have found, because the body is 60% water, when you understand the amount of water in your body, that you should continue to do this on a regular basis, once or twice a day. You reach a point where your body is starting to have enough water in it from your future intention that you start to see the changes in your life. Some people have reported success with this with a single sitting where they do this technique one time and others have found success if they do it on a regular basis. When you're done drinking the water, just thank the universe. Go back to your normal routine. Assume it's happening. You can feel the water in your body interacting with your mind and changing you in amazing ways. Now, if you only have one glass, the other technique to do is just take that one glass and write down the future reality that you want with it. Write all the things you want and then drink from that one glass. Something seems to happen when you create a quantum entangled state between the old reality, the one that you're in now, and the new reality. By switching the glass or combining the water, something seems to happen. So I have found success with the two glass technique and in particular mixing the water together, I've found success with or shifting from the current reality to the future reality and then drinking it. But I recommend that you experiment over a 21 day period with each technique and whatever works for you. It does depend on how well you are at attributing your intention. I've also found speaking into the water, meaning that I can see my sounds vibrating on the water as I speak my intention, seems to have power. You can get special glasses that have crystals in them that you can put your water into that I believe can enhance your intentions and you can find those online. There's some great places that you can look. But I would now become very, very careful about whatever liquids that you consume, understanding that water is in your coffee or in your Gatorade or whatever it is you're drinking. And I would try to do something to bless that water at all times, knowing that it carries memory. This will slowly pull you into the future reality, the water particles begin to have a handshake communication with the old reality. And then what happens is you'll start to see this reality happen. So for instance, you can write down your current balance in your bank account, say it's $3,262. And then on the other one, you say 34,262. And then you mix them together, try for 21 days and see if there's a change. Then pour from the old to the new, try for 21 days and see if there's a change. The only way that we can properly quantum jump because of its complexity and its unique interpersonal nature based on what you're thinking is to experiment. You can try the one glass technique where you, you write down your desire, you set your intention, you energize yourself, you visualize your future, you put it into the new glass and you drink the water. Try that for 21 days. I would love for you to treat this like a laboratory and write down 
the results in the comments of how it worked for you. We live in a world that's forever changing and our understandings of the world are changing too. Quantum jumping using water may not be for everybody and that's okay. But those that have tried the other methods and maybe not had as much success, you can try this and you can gain wealth and love and even happiness. The use of quantum jumping has resulted in many positive results for many people and has such a large following because of it. Those that have chosen quantum jumping with water or not have experienced great outcomes. Those that haven't used water are beginning to understand the power that water holds and how it can actually increase the results exponentially when performing a jump. So what I'm saying is that you can start to use this technique in addition to the other techniques moving you even further into that reality. Quantum jumping is very powerful. And if you do it right, you'll begin to reap the rewards. If by chance you have only recently been introduced to this or using water to quantum jump and are still not sure, best thing to do is to try it. There's no harm in attempting something that has no negative side effects. Drinking water is not going to hurt you. So for those that say this is BS and it's not true, okay, try it. Try it. Tell me what happens. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>